welcome everyone to the joint meeting for the Rules and Open Government Committee and Committee of the Whole. Uh, nor, um, Tony, uh, can you take roll, please? Arenas? Cohen? Here. Davis? Here. Perales? Here. Jones? Present. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start out with the agenda for March 15th. And we are going to start on pages four and five. Six and seven. Eight and nine. Ten and eleven. And twelve and thirteen. Fourteen and fifteen. And page. 16. And there is an ad sheet for the maker of the motion. So we're going to go to public comments. Uh, Tony? I have no hands up. Oh, Wendy, Wendy Mahaney Guruhu? Sorry. Oh, there we go. Hi. There you go. Uh, thank you. Hi, this is Wendy Mahaney Gurhu. I'm the chief of the Library and Education Commission. I want to thank you for your commitment to, and continued support of the library and its many uh, essential services for the community. As was done before, the library aims to provide world class, free, accessible resources, training, and support for literacy education, as well as workforce development and many other <clears throat> building opportunities. As we look forward to fiscal year 22-23, the commission respectfully asks the city council for resources to provide our, provide our residents with the necessary services to transition out of the pandemic with the following priorities. Full restoration of all hours at all library branches. Fully fund education and digital literacy initiative and the SJ access staff positions and program funding. Annualize staffing to continue equity, diversity and inclusion efforts library collection development support, particularly e-resources for which <clears throat> there was increased demand, expanding library juvenile materials, find, finds free to finds free for all materials. Again, the commission respectfully asks the council to continue supporting the library's mission of providing every resident from childhood to adulthood, the opportunity to, pretend, to attend programs, obtain career coaching, earn high school diploma, learn to use technology or do homework with family, regardless of where they live, their financial sta status or the barriers they may face on a daily basis. Thank you. Back to the commission committee. Okay, council member Cohen. Uh, yeah, I just have a couple questions. Um, last week, um, when I asked about it, I think I was told that the item on the um, Business Professional Roundtable initiative was going to be added on the ad sheet for the 15th. Um, do we know if that's coming back in the next couple of weeks? Council member, yeah, and I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't get a hold of IGR staff um, before the meeting. So technically, um, the motion from the Rules Committee was to accept that as a, uh, as a uh, an opposed position oh. because it, uh, it does align with the so we don't uh, need to have it on, that's clarifying, we don't need to bring it to council. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be included in the meeting minutes, um, which will be approved, um, but it technically doesn't 
need to to be approved by the council. Oh, okay. Um, because it, do, it did align with the legislative guiding principles and priorities that you already uh, set forth. So it doesn't actually need to come to the full council. Okay. Sorry opinion. if I misunderstood. I guess like we. Can, yeah. So so did I. So did I. <laughs> I can let the uh, let League of Cities know that we've taken the position then, which I think is what the point of this is. That is correct. Okay. Um, the other item for for the land use items, I just want to confirm. They cannot start before 6 p.m., right? Because it says land use is a 6 p.m. meeting, or, to, or if we move faster, would they start earlier? Uh, Tony or Nora, I believe that since that was previously noticed, it does need to start at 6 o'clock, is my understanding. Is that correct? Yes, if, if something's been noticed for 6 o'clock, we need to have it start at 6. Okay. I just was confirming because we I wanted to give it more time certainty if necessary because of the applicant in our district asking for the schedule. So, but if it's gonna be not before six, then that's, I think, good enough. So I'll make a motion to accept the agenda with the ad sheet. Okay. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. And Lee, just, I, I see the agenda is not overly packed, but I wanna still ask you the question anyway, just because I, I don't wanna get out of habit that we review this agenda and, Determined that it's uh, balanced? Yes, we have, Vice Mayor. All right, I just wanted to get that out. Thank you. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Tony? Arenas? Yes. Cohen? Aye. Davis? Yes. Carlos? Yes. Jones? Aye. Thank you. Okay, on to the agenda for Tuesday, March 22nd. And we are going to start out on pages four and five. Six and seven. Eight and nine. Ten and eleven, and twelve. All right. So we're going to go to the public, Tony. Tony? Beekman. Sorry, that's my fault. Oh, no worries. Hold on, Blair. Go ahead. Hi, thank you. Blair Beekman here. Made it. Uh, thanks for the meeting today. Uh, Item 8.2, I wanted to quickly offer uh, is an item about uh, the, the, what is the current state of COVID-19 rental assistance and uh, implementation of local eviction diversion and settlement program. So where, where is the uh, COVID-19 rental assistance? Where will, where will we be with that issue? Uh, it's coming March 22nd uh, to, to council again. Uh, thank you. Uh, hopefully it could be, it could have been sooner, but uh, March 22nd will be good. It will be a time for all of us as community to really uh, get together. And, and what is the current state of uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, eviction moratorium practices and funding and ideas and, and tenant rights issues. And good luck to all of us, how you can work on this issue and how we can talk about it. And I just wanted to mention at this time, just so we can be ready and aware and ready to go. And uh, thanks for your time. Back to the committee. Thank you, Tony. Uh, and so, um, Lee, just so you know, uh, the mayor is not going to be at this meeting. I will be leading this meeting. So I want to work with you to load up on the agenda all the things that I want to accomplish that the mayor's against. So uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll loop back with you. Yeah, 
Yeah, you so can, I, I don't know how to respond to that. Um, <laughs> so can I get a motion? <laughs> motion to approve. Thank you. Including Anchi. <laughs> I'll second. All right. I think Raul already seconded what you wanted to do, though, Chad. Okay. I can also incorporate that into the motion. Yeah, I think Vice we, Mayor. I, I think I got three or four seconds on that okay. one. <laughs> All right, um, Tony. Arenas. Yes. Cohen. Aye. Davis. Yes. Prowlis. Yes. Jones. Aye. Thank you. Uh, point of order, Chair, I'm being told by our agenda services team related to March 15th that the land use items were technically noticed for 1.30, not 6 o'clock. Wow, okay. Um, so, Council Member Cohen, I didn't know if you wanted to reconsider um, the motion, okay. given the time sensitivity, if you wanted to, to try and make something more specific. Yeah, I'd uh, like to be more specific than that. We had the developers, say, or the folks at the business owners say, that they were planning to take the whole day off and just come at 1.30 and spend the whole day there until it comes on. And I would like to accommodate for them. Um, uh, you know, I, there's only two items really on the agenda, but they could be long ones, I suppose. Although the, I don't know about the golf course, how long it'll be, but the mayor's budget measures could take a while. So I don't want to necessarily make us stay longer than we have to, but we could say a not before, I mean, what if, if recommendation from somebody not before six or not before five, depending on what people think is the right time. I think uh, not before five, okay. it wouldn't be too much of a stretch. Okay, we'll say not to be heard before five o'clock. If I can amend my motion to include that for item, it's really for item 10.2, uh, which number is it? 10.2, I think. Um, I think we have to recall the vote first. Okay. Yes. So, uh, so I'll make a motion to recall the previous vote and and we'll start there. Okay. I'll second. Of, all right, a motion and a second. Um, Deb, do you want to comment on the the vote recall or? Oh, no, I was just going to comment on the time. I was going to say, you know, we could always say not before four just in case so we wouldn't have to take a break. Um, and then they know they don't have to take the whole day off and just log in at four. Yeah, not before four is not that much of a stretch either. Since well, look, it I isn't clearly light let's, agenda. Let's do the recall vote and I'll ask a question about that. I was going to say, we can yeah. uh, Sorry. take that input. All right, uh, Tony? Arenas? Yes. Cohen? Aye. Davis? Yes. Prowlis? Yes. Jones? Aye. Thank you. So I'll just ask, I mean, uh, having only been here for one but mayor's budget message, do we think that that um, it'll take, it won't take too long, right? So we, we think it, it could typically be done an hour and a half. Okay, so not before four, I guess, is a reasonable time to say then and let them know. Well, so I'll I, make a motion. Oh, sorry. Go I was going to say, I think it won't take too long, which means we're in trouble. It's, well, it's going to take long. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's that, that's reasonable. I'll say I'll say I'll make a motion to a, approve the agenda for next week with the ad sheet and a and item ten point two not to be heard before four p.m. All right. Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, Tony. Arenas. Oh, sorry. Stop. Hold up, Tony. Uh, okay. Councilmember Prolis. Thank you. Sorry, uh, Vice Mayor. I am hearing from uh, the mayor's office who I am in a brown act on on item 10.4, the North First Street Urban Village, uh, that they're gonna need a little bit more time. We're working on a joint memo on that one. And so um, I don't. I, I know that you just mentioned he won't be here the following week. So I was just gonna say a week deferral, um, but if he won't be here the following week, then maybe it needs a two week deferral. Um, I, either way, I'm comfortable if we just do a week or two and we can figure it out following, but it just it looks like we uh, we don't want to hear that on the, the 15th now. So if we can defer 10.4 uh, as well. Okay. And um, Councilmember Cohen, can you incorporate that in your... Okay, we'll add that to the motion, yes. Okay, and is that all right with the seconder? Yes, I think I was the seconder. All right. Okay. 
Tony, let's give it another try. Arenas? Yes. Cohen? Aye. Davis? Yes. Corrales? Yes. Jones? Aye. Thank you. Okay, on to the consent calendar and we'll go to the public first. Tony? Blair Beekman? Hi, Blair Beekman here. I'm not sure if consent calendar is items B1 through B4 or just B1. Uh, the, uh, B2 is the uh, monthly report of the city auditor. Do I wait for him or do I speak now? It, that's this this item. Oh, it's on consent now. No, no, uh, no report from the city manager, uh, city auditor this month. Okay, well, uh, with that said, uh, just a thank you as always for the monthly city auditor report. It offers just a plethora of different, uh, you know, programs and projects that the auditor is, is talking about and thinking about and working on. Uh, included this month, and they work, you know, in three to six month increments on these things continuously. And you can, the public can uh, really comment on all these items if they want. Um, there's items about uh, wage theft issues, uh, equity pledge issues. Um, the firearm regulatory process and policies. And I think what I want to start with uh, myself is, uh, oh, this Bill of Rights for Children and Youth, uh, COVID-19 recovery expenditures. What I wanted to start with was their clean energy reporting and uh, practices that they're you know, checking upon. Um, what was mentioned yesterday, uh, SJCE is going to be starting to uh, practice uh, uh, they want to uh, get some more money for, for the future of, of uh, clean energy programs for their programs. It seems like we're going to be making a really big push towards uh, U.S. fossil fuel use now in the next few years. I hope that we don't fall sway that we can just party with U.S. fossil fuel at this time. We've set a really important course towards renewable energy. And if we keep up those good efforts, that's part of the good cause we speak to uh, to Russia at this time and ourselves as well. And with the firearms issue, good luck how all community can talk with city government at this time on those issues. Thanks. Um, Jill Borders. Hi, thank you. I wanted to comment on the, li uh, the letter about the library. Uh, I just rarely get a chance to compliment the library. I know we all love it and everything, but uh, the letter explains how during COVID-19, you know, all of what they did. And I just want to confirm that the library was an incredible resource during the early months of COVID-19. Once they figured out a system for self-checkout and we could go and stand at the little table outside with the door still shut, but the person from the library coming in and out, that just meant a lot to me. And I just wanted to say that out loud. Um, so I really hope that we can do everything in our power as a city to find the money to budget um, the way the library is asking because they really came through. So thank you so much. Back to you. Thank you. Can I get a motion in a second, please? Move approval. Second. Awesome. Tony? Arenas? Yes. Cohen? Aye. Davis? Yes. Prowlis? Prowlis? Jones? Aye. All right. Um, on to the next item, which is open forum. Mayor Beekman? Hi, we're at the end of the meeting. Wow, thanks. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks uh, Thanks for your work about uh, working on the Sister City program. Uh, boy, it's a real difficult uh, process, and, and, and thank you that uh, we're going to try the route of open communication and, and, and locality, working at the local level uh, between people. Hopefully that can uh, make a difference. Um, if we show them our best practices and our best selves, and if we continue to want to work on what is our best selves at this time, like with renewables, like with uh, reimagine and, and, and equity and health and human services, these are the practices of peace. These are our ways we're practicing peace and to end war, basically, and to end the military industrial complex. Sharing these things for the future of Ukraine, 
I think would make an incredible impression on them. And we have to, I know we already are, we have to continue these good efforts. And that's, that is the efforts how we work towards and talk about and create peace for the future of this region. Um, I, with that said, you know, to deal with my uh, accountability and openness with technology issues, it can really, really help organize our vision zero questions at this time. And I think that we're, we're in a bit of a, you know, crossroads how to deal with, uh, you know, law enforcement and vision zero tech questions. Uh, the civil protections and civil rights of, of openness and accountability can really help really help with a direction how to define the law enforcement and uh, and Vision Zero uh, neighborhood safety questions at this time. I think it can give guidance, understanding, and, and create a really clear, good path how we, we're going to develop our technology for the future of San Jose. So, you know, really good luck in these efforts and really keep it uh, minimal and minimum. And when you do that, it, it just brings out our better selves, I feel. So thanks for your time. Uh, sorry, Chair, to, to interrupt. Uh, this is uh, you know, Councilmember Perales. My device cut out right before our last vote. So if I could just ask the clerk to register me as an I on the consent counter there. Apologize. Yes, thank you. Caller 9157, press star six to unmute. Caller, there you go. Yeah, hi, uh, Martha O'Connell. I have spent uh, one and a half days trying to get the phone number of a city department. I'd like to give a huge shout out to Selena, uh, the young lady who's staff mayor and council. Uh, she helped me and I am asking the office of the city manager to, to help citizens with the city website. It is not user friendly. If you go to your government, and then you go to departments, all those department listings, when you click on them, should be the same. Pursuant to the ADA, I am requesting that the phone number and the email address be on the front of the first thing that people see in large font. When I went to environmental services and Selena went there also, there is no phone number. There is nothing. You have to go to the little box that says, how may I help you and type in what is your telephone number? Citizens should not have to do that. The pages should be consistent. And the first thing that should be on each and every department page is their telephone number and their email address. So please let's make it easy for citizens to contact departments and not difficult. Thank you. Jill Borders. Jill Borders. Hi, I have four quick things. One, I really appreciate next to council member Arenas's um, uh, name. She's got her district. So it says district eight next to it. And I thought, you know, just as a quick idea, each one of you somehow, I don't know, you know, how it would work, but each person could put down next to their name what department they're from, who they are, what district. It just will help people that are learning and trying to kind of dial in. It helps me anyway. Um, the second thing is I'd really appreciate the, the further use of QR codes on our de development posters around the city. It would be really helpful if all you have to do is on that development proposal, big poster board is develop a QR link that leads directly to the person at the city that you could email and information about the project. I've mentioned it before. I just think that would be a huge time saver for people to just quickly get information about the project, be directed to the city's page, and in addition, uh, not have to leave voicemails and things like that for people uh, in planning to have to return. The third thing is when a developer, or excuse me, when a property owner purchases a property and connects with a developer and puts in, submits for a project, we should never leave them off the hook for taking care of that parcel. So this has just happened, I've, I've mentioned it at another meeting, so the fish market on Blossom Hill Road, I'm sad to say, I will no longer be eating there, it's closing, it was purchased by somebody, it's gonna end up being affordable housing. Um, that's great. What's not great is the weeds have started to grow. So now I've gone by, taken pictures, I've sent an email to Leslie Guardino saying, hey, I don't mind working um, to pick this up if you'll pay me minimum wage. <laughs> um, I'll clean it up for you. 
but you need to clean it up. You're the property owner. So I'd like to find out how we could link our decision-making process to um, how much these people value the community that they're about to serve uh, by cleaning up. And fourth is just not enough time, another, another day. Have a good one, thanks. Brian Darby. Thank you very much. I'd like to, um, actually, Ms. McConnell and the other folks that just spoke really did a good job as far as like making a, the websites consistent um, and working on some of the web designs and stuff. You know, I, I started working on web pages before there were web pages. Actually, my first computer was an Altair in 1974. And I'm willing to give free help to the people who are writing the 311 app. Um, and uh, I tried it before and had no luck, you know, tried reporting, using it on a phone. You can't, um, when you try to use the little map to pinpoint where you're at, most of the things that need to be cleaned up don't have addresses in front of them. They're like the sides of roads and stuff. And it'd be really good if we could be clear, if one part of an embankment that's dirty needs to be cleaned up and that belongs to the city, and then another part belongs to Caltrans or whoever else, whatever jurisdiction. Make it possible to connect all those so that when we make this concern, we could show that up. Um, I mean, I, I'm offering, I'm willing to help, you know, like I'll send some ideas and stuff or even maybe do some coding even. I don't, I hate coding, but anyone will do it. If it helps make the city better, because a lot of us really do care. And what Ms. McConnell said, those were amen and hand claps. Um, and I'd like to make one more thing. Uh, Mr. Jones, thank you for your service. Uh, I, I did get your personal information. I will write you that letter, I promise. Um, you're a high quality individual and you did a lot of, and I really appreciate that. So thank you. Back to the chair. All right, this meeting is adjourned. Bye everyone. <laughs>